Lift him up, June 24. Bear a living testimony. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Because of the increasing power of Satan's temptations, the times in which we live are full of peril for the children of God, and we need to learn constantly of the Great Teacher, that we may take every step in surety and righteousness. Wonderful scenes are opening before us, and at this time a living testimony is to be born in the lives of God's professed people, so that the world may see that in this age, when evil reigns on every side, there is yet a people who are laying aside their will and are seeking to do God's will, a people in whose hearts and lives God's law is written. God expects those who bear the name of Christ to represent Him. Their thoughts are to be pure, their words noble and uplifting. The religion of Christ is to be interwoven with all that they do and say. They are to be a sanctified, purified, holy people, communicating light to all with whom they come in contact. It is His purpose that by exemplifying the truth in their lives, they shall be a praise in the earth. The grace of Christ is sufficient to bring this about. But let God's people remember that only as they believe and work out the principles of the gospel can they fulfill His purpose. Only as they yield their God-given capabilities to His service will they enjoy the fullness and the power of the promise whereon the church has been called to stand. The followers of Christ are to be separate from the world in principles and interests, but they are not to isolate themselves from the world. The Savior mingled constantly with men, not to encourage them in anything that was not in accordance with God's will but to uplift and ennoble them. So the Christian is to abide among men, that the savor of divine love may be as salt to preserve the world from corruption. Daily beset by temptation, constantly opposed by the leaders of the people, Christ knew that he must strengthen his humanity by prayer. In order to be a blessing to men, he must commune with God, pleading for energy, perseverance, and steadfastness. Without this daily communion with God, no human being can gain power for service. Christ alone can direct the thoughts aright. He alone can give noble aspirations and fashion the character after the divine similitude. If we draw near to Him in earnest prayer, He will fill our hearts with high and holy purposes and with deep longings for purity and righteousness. God desires His people to show by their lives the advantage of Christianity over worldliness, to show that they are working on a high, holy plane. He longs to make them channels through which He can pour His boundless love and mercy.